Um, hi, thanks for joining my talk. I'm really, really glad to meet you uh, virtually. And today I will talk about um, cover your projects with a multi-purpose lightweight Node.js registry. But before I start, uh, please allow me to introduce myself, uh, but let's run this comment first. Perfect. Uh, my name is Juan, I'm from Spain, but with strong roots from Nicaragua. I'm a senior front-end engineer at eBay, and I lived since one year ago in Berlin, and previously uh, in Austria for a few years. I'm the lead maintainer of the Vertasio project. Um, I really love open source, uh, especially Node.js. So today I'm going to talk about a topic I'm really, really passionate about, using a registry with Node.js. So at the end of this talk, uh, you have learned um, the role of the registry in your project, a small introduction to Verdasio, and all the benefits of having a private registry in combination with your project. So before we go to the main topic and features, I want to define one of the main ideas I'm going to mention today, uh, the registry. So when we are installing our packages, this is the picture we have the most of us in our mind. A slow and heavy process we are forced to execute in order to achieve uh, our goal to build or running a project. But independently of the package manager of, of your taste, uh, those are only one part of the effort to build a project. The other part falls into the responsibility of the registry. So what, what's, it, what is a registry and why we should care about it? Um, a simple definition of a registry is a repository of packages composed of tarballs and metadata, also known as packments, uh, which stores and tracks the version of a package. Um, technically, it's more complex than this definition, but this is good enough for the purpose of this talk. So what's the role of the registry in your app? Um, the package manager uh, needs information to calculate the dependencies in your project. Uh, this information comes from the registry. But without a registry on the other side, um, the package manager, it does not much to do by itself. So the registry uh, must have high reliability, otherwise you are totally blocked. The registry is in the middle of the critical path of building your app. So a new solution is having a server registry in the middle to back you up. So Vertaccio is a lightweight open source proxy and private registry built in Node.js. And today we will add a new adjective, uh, multipurpose. Uh, what this multipurpose means, um, the principal reason for using Vertaccio is for hosting private packages. Um, but also it has the ability to fetch for multiple registries. Um, but while Verdaccio uh, proxy to external registries uh, also holds a copy of every package and persisting a copy of data for future requests. Um, also, you can emulate real testing, and this is the newest one. And I want to emphasize here, uh, it's a complement rather a tool itself. So before we delve into what Verdaccio is and how to use it, um, it worth learning uh, more about the problem domain itself and um, the fact that our apps must rely on external services 100% is the main issue. Um, services might fail and if you need uh, additional, inform uh, additional features also you need to pay for it. Uh, our apps should be able to run and deploy without external interference and reduce the scope of the failure to internal domain rather external reasons. Uh, portability is also a big problem for other solutions, and the relationship is small, uh, small enough to be a dependency. And in any of your projects um, that's, which, that provide an interesting set of opportunities like we are going to see later. Getting started with Verdaccio is really straightforward. Uh, just install the package globally and run Verdaccio command. A Verdaccio is so small and that can be combined with npx command. And the default configuration is more, comp is more than enough, uh, but for the most use cases, but also is based in JAML. 
Um, here I'm using uh, VM for simplicity, but any other package manager works fine. But that has an official docker image and also a Helm official chart. Um, and this is the way that actually you can uh, actually you can uh, use it with Docker. Um, the unique argument you need to use here is the, the port, and but also you can extend it with Docker other Docker features like volumes and so on. The next step is configuration, uh, custom registry, and there are actually three ways. Um, the first one is the faster way, which you can use the registry flag, and this works per command. Um, the second one is a uh, set the registry property at the npm rc file, and this is the most common way and recognizes by other package managers. And also you can host in your operating system home directly as a global or in the root of your project. In the package JSON, also you can define the publish config um, property. Um, in this way, you can ensure uh, you are publishing to the specific registry. And, and, and this one cannot be overruled by any of the previous options. One personal recommendation is uh, NRM. Uh, this tool is really handy, and actually this one works only globally, but also it has a nice CLI when you can switch between registries. Or to try. Hosting a private package, a private registry is a must to have in combination in, um, with your project, and there is many reasons for it. Security by far is the most important one, and it acts as a firewall to avoid leaks to public registries, and privacy perhaps is the most valuable one. And the fact that nobody can see your code, uh, it's, uh, it's priceless. Also, you can have an, uh, an offline, offline experience uh, for those that travel or work remotely in areas with uh, network issues, uh, conferences, uh, airports, coffees, etc. And your project will build even if any outage happens. Redacho is free and is open source. So this is being translated to reduce cost. If you're an independent developer or a smaller startup, Hosting a private package, a private registry never was so easy and cheap because uh, you didn't have to pay any monthly fees. For those who are learning Node.js, um, teach Node.js is hard if you cannot use a registry. Um, NPMGS is not made for that scenario. Uh, for instance, you cannot spam it with fake names or uses offline. Staging a registry is uh, the best reason to host in one. Um, because having a hosted, uh, a hosted staging registry uh, is maybe the best decision you can take. And you might, uh, have, uh, you might have the need to publish uh, a snapshot or calendar releases that need to be hosted somewhere uh, to be consumed by other parts of your app. And a private registry in those scenarios became crucial and, and it's a huge advantage for several reasons. Um, host, uh, hosted within your net, uh, your network um, make packages uh, much easier to overwrite. And also uh, the projects in development can leak sensitive information if you are doing some snapshot publishing in public registries, um, even if you're using private features. So in this picture, we can observe uh, how uh, at Verdacho we use a staging registry to deploy canary versions per pull request. And for instance, um, I created a custom GitHub Actions and on that I'd create a comment in the pull request after publish on my stream server. If we dive into the action, uh, I can extract relevant information from the GitHub uh, context API and invoke uh, the NPM version with some specific uh, special arguments like uh, no Git tag version, which actually avoids to create a Git tag and also prate, which also allows you to, uh, to define a specific ID for your pull release. So the final result looks like this, um, because having a staging registry for my project makes it much easier to anyone to try out right away the Canary version after the build finish. And this is just an example how you can combine tooling with your private registry. When does a staging registry make sense? Um, for instance, uh, 
if you are doing continuous delivery, um, uh, which um, teams produce software in short cycles and, and apps needs to be built regularly, and having a student registry will allow you to create fast snapshots and also faster builds if you catch properly. Apps that, apps that um, are mono repositories uh, can rap uh, rapidly grow uh, for several amount of models and relations between apps. But for instance, if you have a design system which is being used across of all of your organization. Um, when you need to patch a library, um, if uh, any, if, if one of your dependencies has a bug and, and, and you know how to fix it, um, and the official patch never arrives, uh, sounds familiar, right? Uh, let, let's see an example. For instance, uh, you, um, you can publish a patch, a patch version to your prepared registry and, and use it while the real patch arrives. Uh, but that should merge the remote versions with the private versions. And all you need to do is just change the version in your project where the real patch uh, is being published. And now let me give you an example how to um, how a small registry is handy to cover an app of teaching Node.js. Uh, Workshopper is an organization built around the Node.js platform and has roots uh, with the Node school. This organization exists to need the effort of the creation of open source learning material. And how to NPM called my attention when uh, I noticed uh, they were mocking a registry for teaching purposes. So you can learn how to use NPM and for few common actually requires um, a registry like NPM publish or NPM login. Um, so why don't integrate a real, uh, a real one which uh, can be used offline anywhere? So I decided to open a pull request and iterate Verdasio. Now the app can actually focus on teaching and let Verdasio to handle itself the registry features. So thankfully this idea was very welcome. And this is just an idea how to, you can use um, a private registry for uh, for teaching. So all we know, uh, all we know, the private, the public registry is the Oracle of registries, where all our private packages uh, and projects are hosted by default. Uh, but there is not only one, and uh, you might have more than one in your organization. And thus, uh, a registry should be able to access multiple registries with the best developer experience. Um, proxies are gateways between you and internet and Verdacho can proxy between a node package manager and any other registry with a seamless integration. Let's see. So you might have seen this before in a project, and this is uh, the way that NPM provides accessing to multiple registries uh, via NPM RC file. Uh, but this comes with a few disadvantages like uh, user experience or security. So to keep this on, uh, to keep uh, on sync, um, scopes might be hard if your team has a considerable size and few of your developers even might be tempted to leak accidentally password or tokens to the public repositories by mistake and also it looks pretty chaotic so but has a, a feature uh, named uplinks that allows you to centralize all the configuration in a config file uh, you, you, you can um, configure, uh, set up uh, security headers, and release uh, developers for responsibility to keep this on sync. Uh, but that should support multiple ways uh, to set uh, your tokens, locations, and any other node registry can be hooked here. So after defining the app links, uh, also you can define uh, for each package pattern uh, to be fetched for specific remote uh, or multiple ones. And and, and that's all, and Verdasio will look out for the remote effortless for your developers. If you combine this with another private hosted registry, you will have only one single endpoint for all your registries. Caching means placing something in storage on the chance it might, be, it might come uh, in useful later. And being able to catch uh, packages, it's something that the package manager does actually locally, or really locally. Uh, but why don't do it at the level of your app? So why, why, we, sh why we should care about cache? And I will rephrase this. And why could not happen? Um, for instance, a missing library broke in the internet like left a few years ago. Also, this might happen also in your local environment. Uh, NPMGS having a top date, so you can 
to kind of install packages or um, intermediary you're working the internet again like growth for early this year or you're just stuck between your cable anything can happen and you must be covered for all these scenarios so cache is the key and caching dependencies will save the stop block your work in your project and cache dependencies locally is not enough and they can be cleared any time and they're gone so but that should cache by demand and keep the latest track of all your versions uh, private ones and from and remote uh, other remote uh, registries and the folder that contains the cache is just a folder and that can be relocated uh, or copied to another computer uh, furthermore uh, the cache is backward compatible uh, for ECA upgrades continuous integration is part of the life cycle of your app and all, all we want those to be green uh, to maximize the chances of success, I recommend to put a perfect registry catching by demand all your dependencies, and which will avoid avoid false positive uh, dual network or uh, service outages. Uh, you will have better consistency in your app, uh, faster builds with the close location between your registry and your continuous integration server. Uh, also, you will um, I will emphasize here to use a, a log file, and if you have an app. Uh, it might be not required if you, in the case you are building modules and you prefer real semantic version in paste. But in any case, uh, I also recommend to pin your dependencies, uh, which will help to the package manager don't request new updates to the registry so often. Using Verdasho, you could apply an extra optimization, uh, for instance, increasing the match age of your cache. And this will, this will avoid to often request to the more registries speeding up the build. Another usage is emulating real testing. Uh, end to end testing is the technique used for tests whether the entire application be, uh, flow behaves as expected from start to finish. Speaking in OGS means that the package should be tested exactly as we expect to be consumed with real life tooling without mocking the staff, uh, with a real package manager, a real registry. For instance, uh, many Node.js models are CLIs, command line interfaces, uh, like Webpack CLI, Angular CLI, and so on. So those can be only tested via human interaction, and only with end-to-end -end testing, you can have feeling of real testing. So how to test a package uh, with Verace in a test runner? At first, first of all, you need a real package manager, um, any of them. All, then, second step, you need to publish the package to the registry. And then, in this case, production, because the dependency is quite easy to integrate. And the third step is run the test. In this case, we are going to use Jess. So here we have an example. You can see the source code in the Verdachio organization. Uh, I created a, a small CLI, which actually only calculates the area and requires two arguments, wave and height. So, first of all, you need to fork the registry uh, using the module chili process in combination with the required Verdacho as dependency with a few arguments like the location of your config file um, in the book mode. Uh, you only need to await, uh, you, you, you need to wait the message uh, when the registry has it booted, and then you can grab this in a, in a promise and then await it and just uh, uh, do it in the before or in the first section. And just that simple. Second step will be publishing your package to Verdasho. Uh, for this, we can use exit file from chill process again uh, to execute an external application, uh, in this case, npm. And here we are using a, a registry flag, uh, publishing to our registry. The first step is install the CLI and a specific location using uh, specific arguments like the registry that we want to fetch. Uh, and the prefix where I decide where I want to install my package. In this case, I will do it in a temporary folder. The last step uh, is running the CLI and in, from my previous location. And in, I'm using exe file again, but in this step, I want to know the output. So I do, I do return std out and I watch my expectations after, after that. And don't forget to kill uh, the registry in uh, after you finish all your tests. 
but it actually supports plugins. And on, on, on this specific scenario, I'm using a storage uh, in memory, uh, which the objective uh, to run my test faster. Another level is authentication. Uh, here I'm installing a second plugin and having, uh, having all, the rich, all the expensive uh, tasks running in memory will help you to run the test faster. Every project has a particular setup and in open source, you can find many using a Uh For instance, Bubble.js, uh, I will totally recommend you check out this project and see how their, their setup looks like. It's really simple and it's based in Bash. Well, we are near the end of this talk, uh, but two more things before finish. I will highlight from this quote a small part uh, of the tweet uh, from Matteo Colina about this topic. Having a preview registry should be a standard. Uh, as you have seen, a registry is an important piece of a critical path of building your app. And I hope uh, after this talk, you have a different vision of about preview registries. A little summary, um, a private registry gives you more flexibility and being able to automate tasks and or just uh, for the balloon purposes. Uh, keep all the configuration uh, in the server side. Don't put unnecessary weight in, in, in the developer's uh, shoulders. Cache all the things uh, with a private registry and don't block your team uh, from building their apps. Start to test in your packages and ship confidence before it's too late. So that's all. Thank you so much. Um, you can find more documentation in the Vertasio website. Also, you can reach me out via Twitter at a developer or just follow me on GitHub uh, under Juan Picado. Um, looking forward for your questions. Thank you so much.